morning. morning. I want to welcome all of you to worship at Heritage Presbyterian Church. Our hope, indeed our prayer, is that if you've come here seeking the Lord Jesus Christ, you will surely find Christ in the words of Scripture. Those are God's words from the beginning of time through the end of time. In this, the body of Christ gathered to worship and praise God together in person and online. And in the hymns we sing, that's our response of thanksgiving and praise to God. So welcome, welcome in the name of Christ to this worship. I want to thank our worship leaders. Uh, Greer is, you, you probably know, she's doing double duty. Last week she was playing mandolin. This week she's leading worship and still growing a little baby all at the same time. So well done. We're also excited to welcome Emily Carboni. Emily is the director of the camp for the Mount Vernon Children's Theater, and so that's why we have pictures of the Mount Vernon Children's Theater on our cover, and you'll recognize one of those little theater actors is our own Lila Rogers. And so uh, you get extra credit if you can find Lila in that tiny, tiny picture. But we are so glad to have Emily with us as a special music and song leader, and if you recognize her last name, Carboni, it's because her sister, Kate, has sung with us many times as well. So this is great to have you in worship, Emily. Um, we are thankful for our, our uh, video, audiovisual folks. We've got Rich in the back coordinating everything, and we've got Melanie at the camera. Uh, so thank you, thank you. And of course, we're so thankful for our music leaders, for Gary and Jeff. Uh, Jeff is right back from Germany, so if he speaks to you in German, he's still making that transition back. Um, so welcome, welcome to all of you. I do want to offer or lift up a couple prayer concerns. We want to be praying for Christine Adam this week. Uh, her mom and, 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 and uh, husband and, and little one are here, and Christine is at home. Uh, she had to spend a, a week in the hospital to make sure she didn't go into premature uh, labor, and she is doing okay, but we'll be praying for her today and praying for the whole, and the babies. She, so she's not gonna be able to come and be here in person, but if you're, if you're looking in, Christine, uh, blessings, and we're praying for you and the little ones. Um, also, uh, in my own family, Callie Erickson Motz is my niece, and I would invite you to pray for her. She um, ha had uh, uh, issues uh, in a torn um, colon, and so she also, who was pregnant, had to deliver early. The baby Asher is doing fine in the NICU unit. She is recovering from serious surgery. So if you would pray for Callie. I've got my brother and my sister-in-law. I want to welcome them today. And we've been praying for Callie in the, the past week, and we've been seeing the sights of Washington. So they're here visiting from uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So welcome, Mark and Lynn. We're so glad you guys are here. Um, other announcements uh, are in the bulletin. I'll just lift up a couple. We are planning, the women are planning to have a baby shower. Very likely, Christine will be attending on Zoom which will be uh, fine. Luckily, we now have Zoom, and we can do that. And then Greer will be there in person, and we'll be able to celebrate the new babies that are coming. Um, oh, and um, we have basketball on Monday. If, you're, if anyone here is interested in playing basketball on Monday night, 7 o'clock, we just gather. Whoever shows up, there's a little write-up. I didn't really necessarily intend this to be in the bulletin, but you got it. And so uh, we have fun. Uh, so if you're, if you're interested, if you're around at 7 o'clock on a Monday and it's not raining, uh, stop by and we'll play a little one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, three-on-three, whatever, whoever shows up. And it's all ages, all genders, it's just fun. Um, Greer, did you, do you want to say anything about the school drive? Um, Since you're here? Yeah, the school supplies drive ends today. I'm going to collect the items and deliver them to Good Shepherd tomorrow. Um, I believe there still might be some slots for volunteers just to organize the supplies. So there's a link in here, or feel free to come talk to me if you're interested in helping um, get them together and distribute them early August. Thank you. Thank you. Greer's are leading the way for this. And uh, so if you would like to volunteer, 
just let Greer know or sign up on that sign up genius. Uh, also, um, uh, Diana asked if, if we would just, anyone that would like to host Fellowship Hour, you're invited. There are some slots available. It's a lot of fun. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about this congregation is that when the worship is completed in the sanctuary, we all continue into Fellowship Hall to support and encourage and get to know each other. And that's a wonderful blessing. So if you would like to do fellowship time and you're always thinking, well, what's involved? Just ask Diana or Mary or Kathy or, or somebody and they'll let you know. And uh, we would love to have you um, help out in that way. Also, the men's prayer breakfast at 7 o'clock this coming Saturday has been moved to 2 o'clock. We're taking it on the road. We're going to go visit P.D. Smith. Mary has told us that would work. That's an okay thing. And uh, since P.D. is such a vital part of that gathering, we thought it'd be fun uh, to, to, to go off and see him. So we're going to meet in the parking lot at 1.30, drive over to P.D. and Mary's house, and have our meeting there. And mostly it'll be just getting a chance to be with PD and encourage him and, uh, and, and uh, it'll be a, a joy. So that's a few of the things that are happening in our church. Um, I, I just wanna let people know we're in a mask optional time. So you'll notice I'll have my mask on, I'll have my mask off, just so that everybody, no matter what your desire is, will feel comfortable uh, here today. So let's pause for a moment and take a breath and prepare our hearts, our minds, our very being to worship God. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. My children, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understand, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice to understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. and we confess our sins and receive the forgiveness God offers. So let us confess our sins together. Lord God, we gather today to worship and glorify your holy name and to seek our purpose in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We confess that we sometimes let fear consume us 
instead of trusting your word, your love, and your trust. Forgive us, Lord. Grant us the courage to make a difference in this world in the name of Christ. Empower us by your Holy Spirit to be bearers and sharers of the gospel. Hear us as we pray silently to you. Friends, who is in a position to condemn only Christ? And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And this same, Jesus Christ prays for us. If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. Now the old life, that's gone. But behold, a new life has begun. Friends, believe it, it is the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are forgiven. be with you. And also with you. Let us take a moment and pass the peace of Christ to our neighbor. seated. As we feel God's spirit in our lives and in the world, let us respond by offering our gifts to God. While Gary offers his musical gifts, we invite you to come forward with your gifts, symbolic of all the many ways people offer gifts. Let every gift and every giver glorify God this day and in the days ahead.
Let us pray together the prayer of dedication. Great and gracious God, we come into your presence worried and anxious about many things, and you offer the peace of Christ. Let this offering today reflect the peace that Christ offers and our desire to share that peace, comfort, blessing, and hope with all who are in need. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and in the Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to invite any children that are in, would like to come forward for a children's message and uh, any adults that feel uh, fairly young that would like to come forward. Yay! Here you go. Emily is feeling young today. Good for you. And Pam. All, all our, few, our, our teachers are. Well, welcome, 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 welcome to you all. Welcome to everyone. Because today, all of you are children of God. So, but you guys are the featured children, so good work. And uh, today, we're going to look, last week we talked about prayer. And the Presbyterian Church has come up with a vision statement that includes each of the letters of PCUSA. So last week, we were all about prayer and what, why we, how we do prayer. This week is courageous. Next week, united. The week after that, serving. And then alive. So that's kind of fun. And they even have bracelets made up for, um, for us that say prayerful, courageous, united, serving, and alive. Check it out. Pretty cool. Yeah, I bet you guys all want, well, don't worry. By the end of the children's message, that's the bonus. But today, we're talking about courage. And the guy we're talking about is Joshua. And just to kind of put it in perspective, Emily, if I said to you, Emily, I cannot finish this service. I've got to leave. You're in charge. <laughs> or actually, any of you. What would your, what would your feeling be? Uh, yikes. yikes. <laughs> I think that's a pretty appropriate. How about... Uh, you, Give me a few. Mary only needs a few minutes to get ready. Okay, yeah, I would, I would do that. What are other things you imagine Joshua was feeling? What are some other emotions that he was feeling? Aren't there other people better? I heard fear shouted out on this side. Anything else on this side? Any emotions you can imagine him feeling? Encouragement. Great. Yeah, encouragement. Um, because 
what God does is three times says, be not afraid. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Finally, he says, I command you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Yeah, Alex. Sad. What? Sad. 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 Yeah, excellent. Yeah, he would be sad and, and nervous. And, and at the very end, he says, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And so what God did is he knew that Joshua couldn't see him. So he said, just follow this Ark of the Covenant. And in the Ark of the Covenant are some things that remind us of God. Can you name one of those things, Pam? Oh, there's the staff. Okay, there's the staff in there. A another thing that you might be able to name? There's the uh, commandments. There's the commandments, and then there's the, the last one is manna. You oh, okay. Isn't it cool? Manna in the wilderness. So, and everywhere Joshua went, they hauled this Ark of the Covenant so that he would know in his mind and in his heart that what God said was true. And so he'd feel that encouragement that Emmanuel was talking about. Well, it was kind of a lot for him to uh, have to haul around, so I'm not going to give you an Ark of the Covenant. But that's where these little bracelets are handy. So this, this bracelet would just remind you that God is with you wherever you go. Do you want a bracelet? Do you want? And if, if you change your mind, Gary's got one. Okay. But isn't it not? It has something tangible to remind us that God is indeed with us wherever you go. Now, I can't give bracelets to everyone. But we know a song about Joshua, and we can sing just the refrain of that song. I just want to show off for Emily what good singers you guys are. So we're just going to sing Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho. You guys ready? Okay, let's do it. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls came a-tumbling down. And then usually everyone yells crash. And the walls came a-tumbling down. Crash! So God was with Joshua, and God is with us. Let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks, and we give you praise. You are with us always, to the close of the age. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. You can rejoin your families and to the rest of worship. <laughs> you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome in power stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what could stand against our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healed Awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. 
God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Emily. Well, with that song ringing in our ears, our God, I want to read a little bit from the first letter of Paul to the church at Corinth. Listen and hear God's word to us today from 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58, and then 16, 13. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, and I'll tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Oh, where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the work in the Lord your labor will not be in vain. Keep alert. Stay firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So the question I ask for the sermon today is, what does courage have to do with faith. You know, when I was at General Assembly and I first read the vision statement, I understood almost all the categories. I understood prayerful, united, serving, and alive. These, these categories really demonstrate this church that I've grown to love in the past four years. We pray at the drop of a hat, you know, whether it's before the service, back in the back with, with Gary, or whether we are in the hallway praying with someone who's just shared something that's going on in their lives, or whether we're at a restaurant or a grocery store. I, in our little Safeway, I get stopped by people. We start praying right in the middle of the Safeway. We pray at the men's gathering, the women's gathering, the youth gathering. We pray in people's homes. Arnie and I were just in some homes praying with people. We pray with the youth before they go on mission trips. No, we love to pray. That, that's, a, that's one. I can buy that. And we are a united congregation. And our unity is around the life and the teaching of Jesus Christ and the call of God. It's not a political perspective that holds us together but it's a God perspective that holds us together. It's not fear, oh no, that binds us, but it's the love of God that's revealed in Jesus Christ that holds us together. And we are indeed a serving congregation. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah, we love to serve people. We've gotten engaged with our brothers and sisters at the first AME church with Jackie and Mary leading the way and the youth leading the way to serve people on the Route 1 corridor. 
We have sent bags and bags of, of uh, grain to Malawi and helped them develop a, a, a maize mill and electricity. Um, we volunteer, Howard every year around uh, winter time gets volunteers to volunteer in the Vic Hop shelter, and that's just a few of the, the ways we like to serve. So I have no, no worry that you're gonna get plenty of people to serve for the, for the uh, uh, back to school. And we are alive. I think if people stop by and check out a worship service, um, or if they come by on Monday and check out a basketball game with all different generations playing together, or if they come by for Mount Vernon Children's Theater, they would see a lively group then, uh, acting, and, and, and uh, if they just come to a Bible study, or a youth activity, or any fellowship gathering that we have, this is a lively group. We are alive. So I understand and understood when I got this, and I got it on my bracelet, when I got this vision, all these parts of the vision, but I was kind of curious. I expected the C word to be compassion. I was try, so I was trying to figure out, how does courage fit into who we are as Presbyterian Christians? Because courage usually is one of those things we think about for those in military service. My grandson right now is going through survival training, and I pray for him to have courage in the work he does. But what about God's service requires courage? So I looked into scripture to see what does scripture say? Because that's the way we do it as Presbyterians. We, we want to start with scripture and figure out what God is telling us in scripture. And I only found a handful of places that talk about courage. And we've read two of them today. Joshua 1 and 1 Corinthians 16, 13. They were the best examples. In Joshua, God tells, G, tell, or God tells Joshua three times, be strong and courageous. Only be strong and courageous. And then the third time, I command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. I don't know if we can talk people out of being frightened by telling them they, but God can do things we can't do. But, but of course, God was talking to Joshua as he was ready to fight or fit the Battle of Jericho, fight the Battle of Jericho, to, to, to start a military invasion of the land of Canaan. So, so right off the bat, I'm thinking to myself, this fits more the military approach of courage until God's military scheme starts to unfold. And it turns out that what God is really telling Joshua is not a particular scheme or strategy that's going to win the day, but it's that he needs to trust God more than anything else. So the first thing they do is God tells them, take the Ark of the Covenant and have the priest take it right into the middle of the River Jordan. Now, I've been to the River Jordan. It does get deep in the River Jordan, so instead of telling his Army Corps of Engineers to build a bridge so that the people can go, get over the bridge and into the land of Canaan, he says, no, no, just have them take the Ark of the Covenant. So they did it. Now you can imagine, because we've got lots of good military in our, what do you suppose the military advisors are saying when Joshua says, I want the priests to lead the charge marching into a deep river? They would probably say, Joshua, you are out of your mind. But he did it anyway. He followed God. The next thing God asked him to do was even more outlandish. He says, I know you've been in the wilderness for a long time, and I know a lot of the men in your army haven't yet been circumcised, so the next step is you've got to get them all circumcised. Does not sound like the greatest strategy if you want your fighting men to be on their tip-top condition to have them all circumcised. So again, the military advisors are going, this does not sound like a good idea. Joshua does it anyway. Then the next thing, they're all, they, they got through, they've got their army together, they're on the other side of the Jordan, they're looking at Jericho and the walls of Jericho, they have an opportunity to siege Jericho, to starve them out if they want, because they're surrounding it, and God says, no, 
I want you to march around. And then every once in a while, I want you to play the ram's horn. And then march around again. And then play the ram's horn. Seven days, I want you to march around. Now, we've kind of gotten the, the hang of it. What do you suppose the military advisors were saying at that point? You know, they'll be counting how many of us there are. They'll know. There is no element of surprise here. They thought he was crazy. And that's what God was telling Joshua. He says, when the task of head ahead of you seems impossible, and when everyone around you is doubting you, that's the time to follow me. And in the end, the walls came a tumbling down, and they were able to capture Jericho. But the most important part is that Joshua was able to have a courageous faith, a faith that trusted God and would follow God and knew, just like the song that Emily just sang, that God, our God, would prevail. Perhaps it won't be in the ways we expect God to act, it usually isn't. But a courageous faith holds on to that very last admonition. For the Lord God is with you wherever you go. That's not just for Joshua. That's for every one of you when faced with an impossible task. And that promise of God to Joshua is not unlike the promise that Jesus offers to his disciples on the mountain in Matthew. Remember, at the very end, lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Courageous faith is a faith that trusts God in the darkest time, and a faith that's not afraid to reach out with the love of God when other people are proclaiming the world's values, exclusivity, or materialism, or greed, or power. These are the things that really matter. That's what the world tells us. Courageous faith is a faith that takes the resurrection seriously. And that's where Paul's letter to the Corinthians comes in. In the last chapter of this letter, Paul's writing to a community that is besieged on the outside by the Romans and on the inside by conflict within. And so Paul could have just said, oh, I'm going to write these people off. They are not worth it. I've got other places. I've got to go to all sorts of other places. But he didn't do that. In fact, he did the opposite. What he did was to stay there for 18 months. And not only did Paul stay there for 18 months, but he also had his A-team with him for 18 months. And so what he, what he does, and, and then he writes not one but two letters, and in that letter, he reminds them that if they believe in their core of their being that God raised this Jesus from the dead, then God certainly can raise us from despair God can raise us from fear. God can even raise us from the dead in those last days. That's what he means when he says, well, all shall not die, but all shall be changed. If we actually seriously believe in the resurrection, we can't be a people that are fearful of everything, but rather we've got to be a people of hope and a people who proclaim the love of God no matter what. Later in the, in the letter, Paul says, Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling, ex excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor will not be in vain. Here Paul's saying is, because we believe in this God who can do anything, we don't just rest on our laurels. We actually engage in that which God wants us to do and who God wants us to be. We participate in this steadfast love of God. Remember that word in Hebrew? Chesed. One of my favorite Hebrew words. It means steadfast love. And then when Paul says immovable, he's not talking about being rigid and static. 
once we get our faith figured out, we're not going to move at all. No, he's talking about building a firm foundation upon which we can participate in God's building of God's own kingdom. Paul's reminding the Corinthians and us that to be a people of the resurrection, we don't rest on our laurels, but we engage in the work, the ministry, the mission that God's called us to. And when we do that work, no matter what the obstacles are in front of us, God will bring about fruit. It will not be in vain. So at the very end of Paul's letter, where he normally gives a little thank you speech to all the people that have been part of that ministry, uh, he talks, he gives thanks to Timothy, to Apollos, to Aquila and Priscilla, and then he pauses for one last pearl of wisdom. He says, keep alert, stand firm in your faith. Be courageous, be strong, and let all that you do be done in love. Paul's speaking to a church community that was in conflict. It was a community that was in the midst of a major trade in the Roman Empire, and so they were in the very midst of all the idols and the temptations of the Roman world. He could have given up, but no, he was there. 18 months. He was there with his A-team, and he wrote his two letters. He demonstrated courageous courage and faith during his time at Corinth, and so then what he's asking them to do is exactly the same thing. He's asking the people of Corinth to share that same courageous faith in the very midst of the Roman culture. And that's why this letter is so important to us as we seek to live out our faith in the midst of the D.C. area. You know, there are lots of things that can tear us apart. Politics can tear us apart. Old cultural, cultural norms, well, we always do it this way, can tear us apart. Monetary worries, oh no, we don't have enough of this or that, can tear us apart. Conflicting worldviews can tear us apart, and yet Paul reminds the Corinthians and us that we're resurrection people. We are people that believe in new life, and new hope in one Jesus Christ. So when we confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are changed. We're held together by the love of God revealed in Christ. We are motivated not by the power of greed, but rather by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that gives us courage, like Joshua, to listen to God and to follow God, even when it means standing against the cultural norms systemic racism, gender inequality, human rights violations, because we believe in a God who created everyone equally in God's image. So we treat everyone equally, because they are, and we are, in the image of God. It means we take the mandate to welcome the stranger seriously as we help to, to settle the the Afghan refugee family, the Malwan family. It means that we take time to follow God's call. When God says, feed the hungry, he wasn't just talking to his disciples way back then. He was talking to us. And so we partnered with our buddies at the First AME Church to feed people along the Route 1 corridor. We help partner with our buddies in Malawi and the Chinunka congregation to create a maize mill, to build a maize mill, to feed people in Malawi. We partner with the folks at Rising Hope Methodist Church. Even the Methodists we partner with. <laughs> in order to shelter people in our VICOP, Ventures in Community Homeless Shelter. It means when things look darkest and we are likely to despair. We come to God in prayer. We seek God's healing and hope, knowing that in life and death we belong to God and God will not let us go in this life or in the next. That, my friends, is courageous faith. I will tell you, my family had one of those courageous faith moments last week when my niece, seven months pregnant, had to have emergency surgery to deliver her baby and to deal with a perforated colon. And all we could do from a distance was to pray, and then to pray, and then to pray some more. And then just to surround our family with God's love and ours. 
And then, as we watch my niece and her baby recover from this trauma, that's when I realized courageous faith is not just something we find on a battlefield. It's something we need in the battlefield of life. Whether it is in a hospital, or a soup kitchen, or a battlefield, or the sanctuary. If we are a resurrection people, if we believe in a God who raised Jesus from the dead, if we believe in new life and new hope, then our faith does not disappear in a crisis. In fact, we have that same assurance that Joshua got from God, which is, the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God is with us. I hope after we walk out of this sanctuary into Fellowship Hall and then out of Fellowship Hall into the world that we realize that whether we have a a little bracelet on or not, God is with us wherever we go. God is walking with us to care for us, to care for our loved ones. And that God's love, not our fear, but God's love is what binds us together. That is courageous faith. And so today, we're not only going to celebrate courageous faith, but I want to share the words that are part of our courageous faith statement. So let us stand and affirm the words that are under our affirmation of faith. That's the courageous part of our vision statement. Let's confess what we believe. Reformed and always being reformed, we follow the Holy Spirit in new and imaginative ways to places we have not yet been. We foster the hope of reconciliation in Christ who transforms the world through healing individuals, communities, and creation. We work for God's justice and peace for all people in every land walking with the vulnerable, the marginalized, the oppressed, and the abused. Amen. seated. And so we gather around the communion table and we receive the prayers 
of the people of God. And so, and then we offer those prayers up to God, just the way a family chats around the communion table or their table that they eat at and praying to God. So let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God who offers courage in Joshua, wisdom in Paul, and new life in Jesus Christ. We come into your presence today yearning for all these things and knowing that you are with us always in your word and your spirit. You're with us when we are hurting in need of healing. Today we pray for Christine as she comes home from the hospital. We pray that you will strengthen her as she continues to nurture the twins who are growing within her and be with Emmanuel and her mom as they care for her. We pray for my niece Callie and her new baby Asher as Callie recovers from surgery and as Asher continues to grow in the NICU unit. Be with, hold, and heal them both. We pray for Greer today as she leads worship, as she continues to nurture the baby within her. We pray for your blessing upon these young mothers and their babies as we together celebrate new life. We pray for... Perry Carvelis, as he returns home from the hospital from his surgery on a broken hip, be with Perry and his wife, Pat, and sons, Mike and Perry Jr. Wrap your loving arms around the Carvelis family. We pray for our sister in Christ, Sarah Hamilton, for your strength, for your healing, and for your presence to be with her. Surround her with your blessing and your peace. We pray for Pat Meeks and Mary Lyons and P.D. Smith and Sam and Beth Armstrong and all who are convalescing in their homes. Let your spirit of healing, hope, and new life be with them and with their caregivers. Lord, we pray for our church as we seek to be a witness to your truth and your steadfast love in a world that desperately needs your healing and your hope. We pray for those that are dealing with devastating fires in the West and extreme heat in the Southwest. And we pray that the actions we take today might ameliorate the effects of climate change in the future. We pray for those whose lives are devastated by war. Help us to be peacemakers, not only in our own community, but around and throughout the world. And we continue to pray for those in Ukraine who are fighting for their freedom, for those in Syria and Lebanon that are struggling with conflict, and for the refugees who have escaped the violence for now. Let your healing hand of shalom be upon them. We pray for our nation as we deal with the deep divisions within us. Help us to see your image in each other and work for unity and peace. Help us to reach out to all who are in need as we seek to be peacemakers by feeding and by housing those who are in need, by welcoming the stranger and the refugee. We pray for the first AME feeding ministry on Route 1. We pray for the Malwin family as they settle into this area. And we pray for healing around the world. We pray that you will walk with Dr. Beth Stubing as she trains trauma doctors in Malawi and as we support her in that training. We pray for the nursing student, Elvis Kawira, who is learning to be a healer and who we are supporting in her education. Let your healing hand work through these human healers. And we pray for Kyler Holm as he prepares pastors for ministry at the University of Livingstonia, for Cheryl Barnes as she directs mission co-workers in Malawi, and all those around the world that are sharing your gospel truth. God, you have promised to be with us wherever we go, here at home or far away. And we promise to praise your name and to follow you, even as we pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Keep alert, stand firm in your faith, be courageous and strong, and let all that you do be done in love. Amen? Amen. And amen. amen.